Gloire à Dieu. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we thank you for this opportunity to go into your word. We thank you for your awesome presence in our midst. And as we go into this session of listening to you, we ask that you speak to us in accent clear and still in the name of Jesus. We pray that you open our eyes to see the supernatural through the power of your word today in the name of Jesus. We pray that our eyes, our ears be open to hear your spirit speak expressly to us through your word today in the name of Jesus. We receive the grace and the power to do your will and your purpose according to your word that will come to us today in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we take authority over every power of darkness operating in the air, in the land, and beneath the waters, in and around this environment. And we bring them subject to your lordship and your authority today in the name of Jesus. We arrest every spirit of mind wandering, every spirit of distraction, every spirit that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We bring you under subjection and power of the almighty God today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Que ma vie soit une fleur, un parfum pour toi, Seigneur. Que ma vie soit une fleur, un parfum pour toi, Seigneur. Devant toi, je me repens. Fais de moi ce que tu voudrais. Devant toi, je me repens. Fais de moi ce que tu voudrais. Comme l'argile devant les potiers, donne-moi la forme qui te plaît. Fais toutes choses en ton temps. Je serai toujours confiant Seigneur, observe mes voies Garde-moi près de ta croix Je voudrais habiter chez toi Tous mes jours ici bas This song is saying that May my life be a flower unto you May my life become a flower, a sweet-smelling fragrance unto you, Lord. Do what you please with my life. And this is a hard cry in the body of Christ today, that we have people that are totally yielded to God, yielded to our Lord Jesus Christ in all ramifications. So today is the third Sunday in the month of October, the 10th month of the year 2022. And uh, we are considering our theme for the month, which is today the Lord will have us consider a message entitled... Freedom from the spirit of the age. Freedom from the spirit of the age. And we're going to take our reading from the book of Ephesians chapter 2. We are going to have a lot of readings today, but we start from the book of Ephesians chapter 2. And you... Okay, and you has it quickened. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. Okay. Where in the time past? You walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now walks in the children of disobedience. Verse 3. Among whom also we all have our conversations in times past with the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath 
as evil as others. So this is the word of God. This is a letter written by Paul to the Christians in Ephesus. This letter is over 2,000 years old. And it is relevant today in our day. Why is it relevant? We are looking at the topic freedom from the spirit of the age. What is the spirit of the age? At every point in time in history, there is always a spirit of the age. According to the version our brother read, the devil is regarded as the god of the kingdom of the earth. In, jo- in the book of John, in the book of Matthew, the devil is regarded and referred to as the god of this world. Jesus Christ at one point in time said, the God of this world comes to me, but he finds nothing in me. Who is the God of this world? The devil is the God of this world. So he comes, he goes around, he looks for issues, he looks for things to be able to do, just like he looked in the life of Job. So when the God of this world operates at every dispensation in life, he sends a particular spirit. And that spirit, Paul referred to it here as the spirit that determines the course of the world. Is the spirit of the age. If you go through the Bible, the spirit of the age is referred to in many times. There is also a period that is referred to in the Bible. And Jesus referred to that. Paul referred to that. What is that? It's the spirit of the power of the age to come. So in today, we are going to dwell on the spirit of the age. So we have identified the spirit of the... What is the spirit of the age? The spirit of the age is the spirit that the devil releases into the earth at a particular period in time. At a time when Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt. What was the spirit that was at play then? It was the spirit of idolatry. The spirit of the age was the spirit of idolatry. The spirit of, 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 of rebellion against God. And we saw that immediately they crossed the river. Immediately they crossed to the other side. What happened? The spirit of idolatry crept into the congregation. And Aaron was made to set up a golden calf. As the God that brought the children of Israel from Egypt. At some point in time also when prophet Amos, prophet Jeremiah and the rest of the prophets... Prophesy even up to the time of prophet Ezekiel, what did we see? The spirit of the age was made manifest in corruption, was made manifest in idolatry, was made manifest in adultery, reigning supreme across the length and breadth of the world. But today we are concerned ourselves now with the spirit of the age that the God of this world has released into our time and our day. And it is important for us to know the spirit of the age in order to be able to extricate ourselves from its debilitating clutches. Very, very important. There is the spirit of the age and the God of this world who is Satan determines and sets the parameters of the spirit of the age. And so, Paul tells the Christians in Ephesus thousands of years ago that once you were under God's curse, once all of us here were under the curse of God. What was the curse? The curse that was introduced into the world through sin. We were doomed forever for our sins. The sin that was committed by the first man called Adam became an inherited sin that passed through generations to generations up to us. You went along with the crowd. We were all with the crowd. And we were just like the others were full of sin. Even a child that is born automatically becomes what? Full of sin. Because he comes in under the link of disobedience, the spirit of disobedience that crept into Eve and then to Adam. So we were all full of sin and we were obeying Satan. Who is described here as the mighty prince of the power of the air. He's a mighty prince. Let no one deceive you. The enemy that we are up against is described in the Bible as a mighty prince of the air. The devil is mighty. But we serve a God that is almighty. 
So your inability to recognize or to identify the devil as a mighty prince of the air has consequences. It has serious consequences. And Christians have a tendency not to recognize that. It's a mighty prince of the air who was able to withstand an angel that was sent from heaven to deliver a message to Daniel. He was an archangel. And today he's on the other side. But thank God we have an almighty God. When we say almighty, that is all might, all power rests in him. And so, this mighty prince of the power of the air, who is what? At work right now in the hearts of those who are against the Lord. That is the cause of this world. That is the spirit of the age that he's talking about. This mighty prince of the power of the air is at work right now. He is at work right now. Paul told us this in 2,000 years ago that this mighty prince, his power is at work right now in the hearts of those who are against the Lord. Everyone who is not saved, everyone who is not redeemed, is under the control and the influence of the spirit of the age, determined by this mighty prince, determined by the God of this world. So if you have any relative, if you have any friend, if you have any mentor that is not born again, know it from now that your brother, your sister, your mentor is governed and directed by the spirit of the age. As long as you are not in Christ Jesus, your actions, your output, your thought patterns, your reflections, everything about you is dictated by the God of this world. So Christians should stop identifying certain persons and say, oh, he's a good person, even though he's not a Christian. Oh, he's a nice person, even though he's not born again. There is nothing like that. There is nothing like that. You are either with Christ Jesus or you are governed, directed, and influenced by the God of this world. Who is the mighty prince of the power of the air. So all those who are against the Lord. What does it mean when the Bible says those who are against the Lord? Anyone who is a non-believer. You are automatically against the Lord. Enmity. What is the enmity against God? The carnal mind. Once your mind is carnal, once you have not come to the saving knowledge of our grace, of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are against God. You are anti-God. You are against God. And so anyone who is against God is automatically under the influence and the control of the God of this world. And the God of this world controls such a person through the spirit of the age. Paul went further to tell us that all of us used to be just as they are, our lives expressing the evil within us, doing every wicked thing that our passions or our evil thoughts might lead us into. We started out bad, being born with evil natures, and were under God's anger, just like everyone else, until Jesus Christ came. So Jesus Christ came 2,000 years ago and ended that generational transfer of sin for anyone who accepts him as his Lord and personal Savior. So this is what Paul is emphasizing here. Then we go to his letter. Uh, let's look at Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. Anyone can read it quickly? Revelation 12 9. Amen. Amen. The great dragon was what? Was pulled, down. pulled down. That ancient snake. That, a, that ancient snake called the devil. Or Satan. Who leads the whole world astray? Who leads the whole world astray? He was pulled to the earth. He was pulled to the earth. 
and with angels with him. So this is further reinforcing who the devil is to us. He's not just the God of this earth. He is the one who deceives the whole world. He is the ancient slave. He deceived the first woman and introduced sin into the world. But thankfully, he was cast out from heaven alongside his angels. And so they are out there in the world controlling and sending out the spirit of the age according to dispensations and time. Then we go to Ephesians chapter Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Let's quickly look at Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. I believe all of us are, can be able to say that without even turning our Bibles. Ephesians 6 verse 12 says what? Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. But against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of, of evil in the heavenly realms. That is what our battle is against. So you can see the ramifications of the dim- and the dimensions of the spirit of the age. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against human beings. It's against the rulers of darkness of this age. It's against the power of the spirit of the age that has gone into the world, that is controlling people and even entering the church of God. So we go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy. Let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. From verse 1, where we did our scripture reading. Yes. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud. Huh? Blasphemous, disobedient to parents, un, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce. Despisers of those that are good. Threaters. Heady. High-minded. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof. From such do what? From such do what? So, Paul, under this heavy flow of anointing and inspiration, looked into our day and gave this prophecy that in the last days one of the things that you will know, because when the, when the disciples asked Jesus tell us when is the last day what was the first thing he said he said beware that you, do not be de- that you are not deceived because in the last days the currency of the last days is, the, is that of deception deception will become like water Deception will become so 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 thick and so 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 great that you will not be able to you might not be able to decipher the truth from the lie. Jesus told us that in the last days, if those days are not even cut short, the very elect may end up being deceived. Now Paul comes further to tell us that in these last days, which he called the perilous times, what are perilous times? Dangerous times. The end time shall be period of very dangerous days. And he went further to tell us in those dangerous days, what will the spirit of the age be doing? The spirit of the age will be very, very busy in these perilous times doing what? Making it difficult for people to be a Christian. 
My version says, you may as well know this too, Timothy, that in the last days, it is going to be very difficult to be a Christian. It is going to be what? Very difficult to be a Christian. Is it easy to be a Christian today? A lot of Christians are yet to come to the understanding that we are in the very last days. Some of us are still planning and making plans and praying that, oh, let the rapture carry a while because I need to marry, because I need to have children, because I need to graduate, because I need to walk, because I need to feed my parents. I need to do this. I need to do that. Forgetting that we are where? In the very last days. And in these last days, anything can happen. Anything can happen. You can be deceived. You can be very busy and you miss out the trumpet. In the midst of the noise and the sound and everything that we are engaged in in, in the world today, the trumpet may sound and you will not even hear. Sometimes when I'm in some very noisy places in Lagos that I cannot even pick a call, I always wonder, if the trumpet sounds, will I be here in this place? Although it's going to be a spiritual thing. But it tells us of the impact of noise and the pollution that we go through in our daily lives, which is created by the spirit of this age to distract us and to prevent us from thinking of eternity with God. So in the last days, it will be what? Very difficult to be a Christian. So if you don't know that we are in the last days, this is breaking news for you. <laughs> but for those of us who know, because a lot of Christians still tell you that, oh no, we are not yet in the last days. We are not yet in the last days. The last days is going to be after 3,000 years, or after 4,000 years, or after 5,000 years. I don't know how they are counting it. But we go by the word of God, which tells us this, this will happen in the last days. Except those things are not happening now, then we can say we are not in the last days. As long as they are happening, we are in the very last days. And these are the days that the prophets of old prayed to experience, but they were not granted the grace. We have been graced to be alive in this age and time to witness these things that have been said in the Bible. So in the last days, it will be very difficult to be a Christian. For people will love only themselves and their money. And they will be proud and boastful. King James put it as what? In the last days, people will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of themselves. What does it mean to be a lover of yourself? Selfie, isn't it? In fact, the word came up, the spirit of the age came up and coined the word from lovers of themselves with selfie. But is it wrong to love yourself? What does the Bible tell us in John chapter 15, verse 12? This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And up to 13, greater love has no man than this for a man to do what? Lay down his life for his friend. So the love of oneself, the love of oneself must not in any way go beyond the love of another. Because we are to love one another. But when your love for yourself becomes more than your love for one another, that you, to the point that you cannot put down your life, lay down your life for your friend, just as Jesus did for us, then you should know that there is a problem. You are supposed to take care of yourself. You are supposed to wake up, take your bath, brush your teeth, wear clothes. Because you don't want to see Christians who say, I, know, I don't want to be a lover of myself, so today I'm going to go out naked. No. Wear clothes, take care of yourself. But when it comes to the point, the issues of the kingdom, and you place self over issues of the kingdom, then you are guilty of being a lover of yourself. Paul goes further to say that lover of themselves and their money. Do you love yourself more than the kingdom of God? Do you love yourself more than your neighbor? Do you love yourself more than do you love your money more than the kingdom of God? Like we always say, 
Selfie, selfie, selfie. Ah, they'll tell you, ah, well, Pastor, why is it in the Bible that the selfie is wrong? No, there is nowhere in the Bible. Because, in fact, selfie as a word was not uh, created. It was created some, some four or five years ago. And the French uh, Academy of uh, Letters, Academy of Science, uh, what's it called again? L'Académie Française. They just accepted selfie about three years ago as a word in French. So many of the words that we use in social media are like Twitter. Also, the French have accepted Twitter uh, and tweet. Je veux tweeter. So this, 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 these are new words. And so you will not come across this in the Bible. But what is the spirit behind your taking a selfie? Usually after church service, we used to see our sisters and our brothers, they rush out there and they're doing like this, they're doing like this, they're doing like this. What is your reason for taking a selfie? That is what God looks at. God looks at the heart of men, not just the actions. So when you are dressing in the morning, which makes you to even come late in most times, you want to wear a particular dress to rhyme with a particular color so that after church service you can do a selfie to show the world, upload on Facebook or on Instagram to show your latest dress. You are guilty of what? Unrighteousness. You are unrighteous. That is what God looks at. You want to put out how beautiful you are. You want to show the world how beautiful you are. You want to show the world how great your clothes is. You want to show the world how excellent your makeup is. That even after church service, the foundation did not give away. You want to prove to the world that you have arrived somewhere, that you are at a certain level. But you are not eager to prove to the world that Jesus Christ died for them. You are not eager. So, of course, there is no picture of Jesus, and that is intentional. You are not eager to write the word of Jesus on your Facebook wall. But you are eager to share your latest selfie. That is what God looks at. Pastors take selfie. There is nothing wrong with that. But it is the intent with which you are taking the selfie. How many of us have taken a selfie that you have not shared? I'm not talking about those who take in the bathroom. Because I know some people even take selfies in the bathroom. And then they discover that, oh, I can't share this. Then they keep it in their phone. And when they take their phone for repairs, the phone repairer gets it. And then he starts blackmailing you or publishes it on, on social media. Men shall be lovers of themselves. You are guilty of loving yourself when you discover that everything that happens to you, you want to first of all put it on the social media. If it's your birthday, you want to tell the whole world how God has been gracious to you from the beginning to the end. Sometimes we even post things without mentioning God. What is your intent for rushing to the social media? Always ask yourself, why am I posting this? Is it wrong to take selfie? No, it's not wrong. But have you asked the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, should I take this selfie? When next you want to take a selfie, ask the Holy Spirit, should I? And he'll tell you when to and when not to. Men shall be lovers of their money. People come to church these days, they don't give offering. The spirit of the age has entered the church today that pastors are apologizing to Christians for asking for tithes in the past. An American pastor said, oh, I'm sorry. I've been insisting on tithes since. It's no longer true. The emphasis of the scripture is not on giving of tithes. We used it to grow our churches. And because of that, many other pastors now begin to enter into crisis. Some went and started insulting him. Some came and said, no, it is not true. It is not that. That is the spirit of the age that we are talking about. The spirit of the age entered some on-air personalities, radio and TV personalities in Nigeria, and they started writing against tithes. 
and people started arguing. Christians started arguing. Eh, what are they even doing with the tithe? How do we give tithe to God? Is the money going up to God? This and that and that. That's the spirit of the age. The moment you begin to question what you what it is what is done with what you give to God, know that you are operating under the influence of the spirit of the age. The Bible tells us in Malachi chapter 3 that there is a need for meat in the house of God. Meat must never cease from the house of God. What is meat? Jesus told us that my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to what? Finish it. Who gave you your money? What is 10%? When you have Christians that are giving 90% and keeping 10, people have gone beyond 10%. But the spirit of the age has entered some people and they are arguing even about the 10%. Do you know that Muslims don't argue about giving? They don't argue about giving. They simply give. Every Friday, they do their sadaqah, they give more than 10%. But we have Christians today who are saying, should we give? Should we not give? Is it New Testament? Is it Old Testament? Whatever you have today, where did it come from? Jesus told us a story or indicated something to us which we are yet to learn from. And what is that? When the Pharisees came and decided to test him, should we pay tax to Caesar or not? And what did Jesus say? Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And he first of all said, bring a coin. Bring the currency of the day. Whose image is there? There is Caesar. So whatever belongs to Caesar, give to Caesar. Then what are you supposed to give to God? Whatever belongs to who? Who in whose image are you created? So Jesus is telling you, give yourselves hundred percent to God. And then you are here arguing about 10%. So that is the machination of the spirit of the age that we are talking about. They will be lovers of themselves and of their money. People even right now to question the church leadership. How is the money being spent? They see a pastor buy a new car. Or they see the pastor's wife travel abroad for holidays. And then they, they meet some of the elders, and then the committee is set up to investigate the church funds. This is the level we have come to. Beware of the spirit of the age, even in the church. So, and they will be proud and boastful. We have said it severally that pride is the only perfume that is not allowed in heaven. And a lot of us wear that perfume of pride. We wear that perfume of pride. We feel that, oh, I am more beautiful than my classmate. I am more beautiful than my friend. I am more handsome in my clique of friends. Oh, I have the best shoulders. I have the right shape. My friends don't have the shape. Even in our church, all the sisters are not having the shape that I have. That is why I have to wear very tight-fitting clothes so that everybody knows that God has given me a very good shape. No, I mean, if not, why, why would you go to Taylor and ask the Taylor to measure you according to your size? Is it because the clothes is scar? Is, is you don't have enough yards for the clothes? Or because you want your shape to show? In the body of Christ today, we say that people should wear clothes that cover themselves. And they say, yes, we are covering ourselves. So they went and even carry a dire or traditional Ankara clothes and sew it so tightly. Yes, it's covering themselves, but it leaves little to the imagination of the eyes. When you attend wedding ceremonies today, you can't, you, you can't but close your eyes. Because what people have done with Ashwebi, Ashwebi has become something else. They even have a period in reception now where they do the dance of breasts. And people, ladies come out, the, 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 the bridesmaids come out to show their breasts and to dance with breasts. That is the spirit of the age that we are living in today. So pride gets into you 
when you want to now wear clothes that show your shape. That's pride. That's the spirit of pride. And what does the Bible tell us about pride? God resists anyone who is proud. You wake up in the morning, you pray to God, yet God is resisting you because you are proud. Where are your prayers going to? You can do anything and become anything in God, but with pride, you can't go anywhere. God hates it. Pride was found in Lucifer. He did not exhibit it. Pride was found in him. And he was thrown out. So when, when, when next you want to wear a particular clothes, ask yourself, who am I trying to impress? The spirit of Wagba. Huh? Yoruba say Wagba. When we are going for a wedding, let's do it. Let them see. It's a competitive spirit that has its origin in pride. So Christians must be well pride. Pride is a manifestation of the spirit of the age that we are living in today. Pride also manifests in selfie. Pride manifests in our clothes. Pride manifests in the attainment and the achievements that God gives us and the way we celebrate it. Some people come to church and give off and give testimony and the testimony is from beginning to the end full of pride. Just to show people that I am in a certain level in God than you. So whatever we do in life, question the intent. Always question the intent. At the end of this month, we are going to have our Thanksgiving, the last Sunday of this month, and people are encouraged to come and give their testimonies. Make sure that any testimony you give is intended to give glory and honor to God and not to show your level in Christ Jesus. Men and women shall be boastful in the last days. We boast a lot of our capacity these days. We are boastful. We can do this. In, in God, I can do this. In God, we can do this. In God, we can do that. Even in the body of Christ, we boast these days. We can sit 60,000 congregation. We can sit 100,000. Oh, come to our church and you meet very rich people who will influence your life. The way we market our church services these days all stems from boastfulness. You are inviting people to come and meet God and you are talking about how you have air conditioners in your auditorium, how your seats are very comfortable, how you give your first-timers Refreshment and snacks. That is the marketing strategy of the world. And that is why we have many business centers operating at churches these days. Because the spirit of the age has gone into the church. The spirit of the age is establishing churches today. Church is built by blood money. Church is built on boastfulness. Church is built on pride. People will be proud and boastful, sneering at God. Has anyone here sneered at God? Do you know how we sneer at God? Okay. There are certain things that God tells us to do in the Bible, right? You say, ah, that one, leave that one for Bible. No, no mind God. That thing is not possible. We are sneering at God. God says, be you perfect. As I am perfect. And you say, ah, nobody can be perfect. No human being can be perfect. We can't be perfect. To, ah, it's a lie. You, can't, you are sneering at God. You are sneering at God. The same way the devil sneers at him even till today. God said, let there be light. The devil fights that statement. He introduces darkness everywhere. Facilitates darkness everywhere, even in Nigeria, even around the world, darkness, even in our houses, darkness, in our families, darkness. And some of us are beginning to rationalize the need for darkness. The moment you rationalize the need for darkness, you are sneering at God. Because God said, Light be. And darkness did not argue with light, darkness disappeared. So we must. 
understand that the moment we begin to argue or justify why the word of God cannot come to pass physically in our lives, we are sneering at God. I don't mind him. Uh, he's seated up there. He, he doesn't know what we are facing here. Uh, you know, he doesn't know that it's not easy. Oh, you be a Christian in the office, and then they bring a, uh, this contractor brings a, 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 an appreciation, and you say you not collect. No, no, no. God doesn't know. He, uh, God doesn't know what we are facing. You are in the traffic. You have to shunt. You pass through the 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 the, the, the one way. Last man catches you. You bring out money and give. Of course, God understands. You are sneering at God. The sneering at God. Men shall be disobedient to their parents. Of course, that has, right from even the beginning of time, disobedience has spanned the length and breadth of the universe. But today, disobedience has gone on a very high level. Because today we see what children are doing to their parents and we wonder, in our own time, we couldn't do this. The spirit of the age that we are living in today has multiplied disobedience. Has taken disobedience to another level. And as the world continues, disobedience will continue to hit higher crescendos. To the point that people will begin to accept disobedience as a way of life. Disobedience to parents. Disobedience to spiritual authority. Disobedience to constituted authority. The Bible tells us to be obedient to the government of the land. To pray for the peace and prosperity of our land. And not to disobey considered authority. But today, even from our Sunday school this morning, we hear of people protesting. We hear of Christians leading uh, industrial unions to go on strike. Yes, because this is our right. This is our right. Who are you to demand a right in God? If Jesus Christ were to demand his right, would you be saved? Would you be where you are today? The spirit of the age has gone out in the whole world today. And we can see, like some years ago, Time magazine came up with each end of the year, they look at the whole year, to determine what really happened this year, who will be our man of the year or woman of the year. Uh, in the year that Barack Obama was elected, he was named the man of the year. Uh, in some years, some persons also were made women of the year because throughout the year, their actions, their speeches, you know, dictated the space of events in the world. So I think some years ago, three, three years ago or four years ago, when the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of revolution, the spirit of the age went into the young people in the world and started steering them to resist governance, to resist authority. Time magazine named that year as the year, the, the man of the year for that year was what? Protests. Protest. And since that year, protest has increased everywhere in the world. Is it Myanmar? Is it Sri Lanka where they protested and removed their president from the presidential palace? Some of the youth even went to the bathroom and used his toothbrush and paste and brushed their teeth. Some went to lie down on his presidential bed and took selfie. Some went to his swimming pool. And that encouraged people around the world. In Egypt, Hosni Mubarak was sent out of power through protest. In Tunisia, the same thing. In Nigeria, we tried our own with NSAS, and some people were sent to their untimely graves, even though the government denies it in date. And we're planning for another one next year, right? If our obedient choice is not respected, we are going to protest. It's the spirit of the age. It's an influence and a machination of the spirit of the age. In U.S., George Floyd was killed illegally by the police. And so protests broke out. How many people were killed in the process? More than 50 were killed protesting the death of one person. 
Now, let me tell us what happens when issues arise. The devil sends his demons to instigate protest, to instigate anger in the minds of the people, particularly the young. And then when they come out to protest, the demons of slaughter goes in, enters the security agents, tells them to fire. Why? Because hell needs to populate itself. Hell needs more souls. Hell needs more blood. Because he recognizes that the end time is near. And he needs to meet his target. How many people were killed in, 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 during the answers? Would they have been killed if there was no answers? So today, protest has become so, so enviable that even the body of Christ is, in, is engaging in protest. During 2021 or 2020, during COVID, we heard that the Redeemed Church of God, we saw the videos and the picture, Redeemed Church of God led a protest, isn't it? In this Nigeria, they led a protest, carrying placards and moving around Lagos. A church of God, organizing what? A protest. That's the spirit of the age. As children of God, where are we supposed to protest? You protest in your place of prayer. The protest on your knees is more powerful than protests attended by a billion people. Who rules in the affairs of men? Who rules in the affairs of men? Who changes leaders and kings? Whose right and power is it to make one a leader and to make the other one God. And you have a direct access to that same person. Yet, you prefer to go carry placards, stand in the sun, and say, we no go want, or we no go green, or we no go green. Even in the universities, today we have, ASU has been divided. We have two factions, everywhere, factionalization. Why? Because of protest. The spirit of protest. But the end point of this spirit of protest is to drag people to hell. When protest happens, the devil is out there looking for the good Christians who are caught in the melee. For example, you say, ah, me, I'm a child of God. I'm not doing protest. Oh, boy, I, I, my friends are there. Let me see what is happening. Hey, you go and stand with them. It is you that the bullet will hit. And when the bullet hits you, the devil will come and stand there and say, this one cannot go to the kingdom. Why? He said, he, he, he joined the protest. Yes, he's your child. Yes, he has lived righteously, but he was in a place of protest. A protest that the spirit of the age, my own spirit of the age, organized. What was he doing there? A man of God attended a cultural event in Cross River. Every year, you know, they organize this, uh, what, is it, what is it called now? Calabar Carnival. Isn't it? Where they expose their cultural dance, they set up car- caravans of people wearing different things, some are even naked, you know, dancing. And this man of God went to look. He was a deliverance minister. So he went to look. Ah, this is my first time in Cross River, so let me go and see what is happening. So he went there and looked. In the night, while he was sleeping, the marine powers came and woke him up. Why did you come to look at us? You are not of our kingdom. Why did you come to look at us? And he said, I did come to look at you. Where were you? He said, you were at the stadium today. You don't know that that dance is to, is to worship us? You don't know that we do the same dance underwater? So for many of us who get ourselves involved in cultural activities and say, ah, culture is culture. You know, culture is culture. Ah, it's our tradition. It's our tradition. Who gave you the culture? The devil. The devil is the author and the finisher of every culture and tradition in the world. Ah, you know, in Yoruba, we don't do like this. Ah, in Yoruba, in Yoruba culture, this is how we have to do it. This, when we are doing a wedding, you have to bring salt, you have to bring yam, you have to bring this. Is that, who, 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 who said that? Who wrote that? Was the person born again? 
And that's how my forefathers have been doing it. That's how my grandfather said we should do it. Every child that is married in this family, you must do this, you must do that. At the end, those items you are bringing are being used to facilitate bondage for the new marriage. So we lock ourselves into serious bondage when we follow culture and tradition. In this age, the spirit of the age that is prevailing now has made even culture and tradition more popular than Christianity. Recently, some people were in Catholic church in uh, Undo, Undo town, and some suspected killers went there and shot people dead. Well, they are suspected today because we have not found, they've said they found some of the the killers from Okene, the Kogi state, and some of them are from the Middle Belt. And there is fight between the Ansaruddin and the Iswap. This one said they are the ones, this one said they are not the one, you know. So, but what happened after the, the, the incident? Nobody knew who did the killings. People were killed right in the church. And so, a few days after, the traditional priests and priestesses in Undo town, led by the old women, came out and placed a curse on those that perpetrated the act that they will be caught within seven days. And so within seven days, fake news broke out that, ah, the killers have been found, that in fact they brought themselves to Undo and went to meet the king and, 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 and uh, apologized that they are the ones that did the killing. And that fake news made a lot of people to insult the body of Christ. They say, can you see now? The church of God was attacked, blood flowed, but is the priestesses of our culture and tradition that rose up to defend God. So you can imagine how God felt. At the end, the police came out and said that was a lie. No killer was found. And already on WhatsApp, people had already forwarded many messages saying, you see, you see why we tell you, don't, don't, don't forget about your culture and tradition. The Undo people never forget that. Now it has helped them. Now it has helped them. So you see the spirit of the age? Some of the things you forward on WhatsApp, you will be asked to defend them on the last day. So be careful on what you forward. Apart from forwarding fake news, be careful of forwarding anything that insults the integrity of God. Disobedient to their parents, ungrateful to them, and thoroughly bad. Today, <laughs> people are ungrateful even in the body of Christ. People are ungrateful to even recognize the contributions and the efforts of their pastor. It's a problem. They say, no. After all, is that not what he, what he is called to do and to be? Why should we appreciate him? I used to have a brother. Every year they contribute money to celebrate the birthday of their pastor. And one year they came to his office and said, look, it's time to call. He said, look, get out of my office. The pastor has his birthday. I don't care what he does with his birthday. It's not my duty to carry my salary and contribute for any pastor's birthday. If you don't have anything to do with your time and your money, you get out of my office. People are ungrateful these days. People come to church and expect church leaders to always be up and about for them. Of course, with Christ we can do all things. But the place of gratefulness that used to be is no longer there. Even in families, even in schools, you do things for students and they don't appreciate the moment you find yourself becoming less and less appreciative of gestures, know that the influence of the spirit of age is upon you. You must appreciate every gesture that is done. You must learn from the examples of Paul, of Jesus. Paul in his letters always appreciated everyone in Ephesus, in Rome, in Galatia, in Corinth. Those that helped him at some point in time. Today we are hearing and reading about them. But are you appreciative of what is being done to you? Are you appreciative of the sacrifice of your parents? Some of us even forget the bad days of our parents. Isn't it? 
Some of us forget to appreciate our mothers on Mother's Day. We forget to appreciate our fathers on Father's Day. Beware of the spirit of the age. So, people will be thoroughly bad. They will be hard-headed and never give in to others. They will be constant liars. They will be what? Constant liars. Was Paul talking about our politicians? Or he was talking about our church leaders today? Of course, when politicians lie, it is part of the profession, isn't it? But when men of God use the altar of God to tell lies, you should know that that altar, the spirit of the age, is at play on that altar. And you have to be aware of where you go to as church. Because after some months, you're all going to go back from here. You're going to your family churches. Some of us were even here last Sunday. Some of us are elsewhere today. So there are so many churches, which is a good development, considering uh, where we are coming from. But are you sure that your church is not under the influence of the spirit of the age? What happens if you are going to a church that is under the influence of the spirit of the age? What if your church was founded by the spirit of the age? Like some churches now. What if your ministry, the ministry you subscribe to, the ministry you follow on YouTube, the ministry you listen to on, on Facebook and on WhatsApp, what if that ministry is the ministry of the spirit of the age? You might want to wonder, how do we know? One of the most popular ministries in Nigeria today has just revealed itself as a ministry of the spirit of the age. Recently, he said that the Bible is not 100% correct. Yeah. Another came and said the Bible is not the word of God. Because inside the Bible, there is homosexuality. Inside the Bible, there is idolatry. Inside the Bible, there is killing. Inside the Bible, even a horse or a camel, a donkey spoke. Inside the Bible, so it is not the word of God. It is not entirely the word of God. These are ministries rationalizing. Using the spirit of the age to rationalize the word of God. Another one said that Apostle Paul made some mistakes. I think that one is from your state. Yeah, we have to start mentioning names because, you know, the devil is not, uh, is not ashamed. He's not hiding anymore. Pastor or Apostle Joshua Selman said that Apostle Paul made mistakes and wrote mistakes in the Bible. And so you have to be careful on who you follow. You have to be careful in this age and time that the spirit of the age has gone into churches to tell people that there are mistakes in the Bible. So when Jesus told us that many will come in my name and deceive many, they will come saying, I am the Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. But in the, they will use that knowledge to deceive many. And how do you know this? When you start following a particular ministry, a particular man of God, and your life is not being transformed, check that ministry. Because the spirit of lies, the spirit of the age that emanates, that emits from the altar, influences you negatively to go the wrong way. They are speaking the right word, but the spirit that is coming out of the word they are speaking makes you to commit sin. Makes you to, to find it difficult to do what? To obey God. People go listen to some men of God and they can no longer maintain their prayer routine. They find it now difficult to wake up in the night and pray because you have been under the influence of the spirit of the age. You can no longer fast. You can no longer gravitate towards the things of God. Why? Because you are listening to a man under the influence of the spirit of the age. 
So let's go fast. Uh, they will be rough and cruel and sneer at those who try to be good. Today in our schools, in our churches, when you see someone who tries to be good, Christians will say, what is he trying to feel like? Oh, he wants to, he wants, she wants to claim that she's the richest here or she wants to prove that uh, he, he knows the Bible more than us. When people try to be good, Christians sneer at such a person. If you are among those who do that, congratulations. You are operating under the spirit of the age. They will betray their friends. <laughs> Has anyone here been betrayed before? You should be thankful when you are, when you are betrayed. You should, equally, when you are persecuted, be grateful. That's what the Bible tells us. That is why we should not demand for our rights. Bless those who do what? Who curse you. Don't demand for your rights. Be glad when you are persecuted. When you are betrayed, Jesus was betrayed with a kiss. Have you ever been betrayed with a kiss? Jesus Christ was betrayed with a kiss. Yet, he never demanded for his right. Oh, he betrayed me. He broke my heart. He said he's a brother. He wants to marry me. And we started going out in the church. And then I saw that he has another sister. My heart is broken. Because of that, I cannot go to the church again. Because of that, I cannot even hold the microphone and sing in the choir. You are operating under the spirit of the Antichrist. Under the spirit of the age. So betrayal will increase. People will be hot-headed. Puffed up with pride. And prefer good times to worshiping. People will prefer good times to worshiping. How many of us were here on Wednesday for midweek service? How many of us were here on Thursday for evangelism? How many of us were here on Saturday for workers' fellowship? We we'll prefer having fun. It's time for fun instead of coming to the house of God. David said what? I was glad when they said to me, let us do what? Go to the house of the Lord. How many of us are glad each time is Sunday morning? We say, ah, no, we're going to listen to those Oh, those preachers again that don't understand what is happening, you know, those preachers that are preaching against our selfie, those preachers that are telling us not to wear trousers, those preachers that are telling us not to wear short skirts. Eh? Isn't it? But we prefer to go to churches where they say, come as you are. Come even without wearing pants. Yes. That's what we prefer these days. We prefer to go to churches that tell us that when you show your shoulders, when you wear, show me your back, you are displaying the glory of God. Somebody told me last week that in Abuja, now, the only private part that women recognize is their intestine. Yes. That the only thing that is not outside now, that they consider as their private part, is the intestine. Of course, there are designs, there are shirt designs that start from here now. That's the spirit of what? Of the age. And we accept this in the churches today. So Paul tells us further, if you go to verse 5 of Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, he says, they will go to church, yes, but they won't really believe anything they hear. How did King James put it? Verse 5. Having a form of godliness. Do you know what that means? But deny what? The power thereof. They will go to church. Yes, they will go to church. But they won't really believe anything they hear. That's the power of the spirit of the age at play. Do you go to church and some of the things you hear in church you say, ah, no, I don't believe that. Or some of us go to churches where we know that this church is in error, but because it's my family church, because it's my friend church, I have to go. You know that certain things are in error, but you accept it. You are also operating under the spirit of the power of the age. 
I was in Abuja when a pastor was accused of sleeping with uh, his uh, female uh, members. And I met one of my friends then who goes to the church. I said, ah, what happened? Did you go to church the Sunday after the scandal broke out? Because the scandal broke out on a Friday and everywhere people were saying, oh, there's not going to be church service on Sunday. And so journalists gathered and went to the church on Sunday. He said, yeah, he was in church. I was in church. And I, when I looked in the congregation, I knew that more than half of the people in the church were not members of the church. They had come to hear from the pastor. And then when the pastor now climbed the altar, we were expecting him to tell us the truth. But the pastor told us that he was going to give a comprehensive response later. So that, I said, so what do you think? He said, I felt disappointed in my pastor. I said, why? I mean, he said, he, 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 I mean, he, he should have told us, I did it, I didn't do it. But why tell us that he is studying his, the, the accusation, he's, he's talking with his lawyers, he's going to give a comprehensive response later. Until date, more than four, four years after now, no comprehensive response has been given. Yeah, so I said, so, and you are still going to just say, well, well, I have to go. You know, I have to go. But you know that your pastor was wrong in sleeping with a church member. I said, yes. But you still go there. So there are certain things such a person, when he goes to church now, and that same pastor is preaching. Of course, you know that pastor will not preach against sexual immorality. You cannot be involved in sexual immorality and you'll be able to stand before people and preach it. So certain things come from certain altars that people in the church say, no, I don't believe in I don't believe in that. Because the altar is polluted. And what is your business going to a, a place with a polluted altar? If you continue like that, you are described by Paul as having what? A form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Don't be taken by people like that. That is the advice that Paul has given us. They are the kind who craftily sneak into other people's homes. They make friendships with silly, sin burdened women and teach them their new doctrines. Women of that kind are forever following new teachers. New teachers. Ah, there's a new, there's a new man of God. There's a new man of God. Oh, have you listened to him? Ah, the man of God said lesbianism is okay. Uh, there's a new man of God that is saying that, look, you can use sex toys as long as you don't get pregnant. Are you following new teachers? There is a new teaching. There is a new doctrine. There is a new frequency. There is a new uh, emphasis of the spirit now. It is not on the old again. Righteousness and holiness have become outdated. There is a new emphasis now. Beware of running after new things. Beware. Of course, our Lord Jesus Christ is the God of newness. Uh, God always does new things. He changes. He moves. But he never changes himself. He changes times and dispensations. But he never changes. So we must be careful. And these teachers, what do they do? Okay, women of that kind forever following new teachers, but they never understand the truth. And these teachers fight truth, just as Janice and Jambres fought against Moses. They have what? Dirty minds, warped and twisted, and have turned against the Christian faith. Do we know Janice and Jambres? Janice and Jambres were mentioned only once in the Bible, and it was Paul that mentioned them. And who are the Janice and Jambres? These were the two sorcerers who Pharaoh called to withstand and to counteract the miracle that Aaron did with his throwing of the rod. And so Janice and Jambres came up with their own, conjured their own powers and their own rods to turn into snakes. But what happened? God's power went over that of the sorcerer and swallowed the snakes. So today, who are the Janice and Jambres in the body of Christ? Who are they? Those who are ready to counteract everything of God. You have Janice and Jambres among elders in the church. You have Janice and Jambres among the youth of the church. You have Janice and Jambres among the pastoral team. When a pastor does something, the others come with, 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 with opposition. They go for their pastoral meeting and they oppose the pastor for preaching the truth. 
The way you are preaching, you are going to send members away out of this church. The, the offering will reduce. The tithe will reduce. You are too much on righteousness. You are too much on holiness. That's the spirit of Janice and Jambres. That's the spirit of Janice and Jambres. And guess where Janice and Jambres ended? They died. So are you following, are you manifesting the spirit of Janice and Jambres? Each time you oppose the move of God. Each time you oppose the work of God. Each time you walk against the manifestation of the sons of God. You are operating in the spirit of Janice and Jambres. Which Paul tells us has gone into the world today. Another manifestation of this spirit of the age in the body of Christ today that we see is that people no longer ask, what does the Bible say? Do you know what we ask now? Do you know the questions Christians ask now? Why can't we do it? Why can't we do it? Ah, don't do this. Don't do this. Why can't we do it? Instead of asking, what does the Bible say? Yesterday, my son wanted to buy a bracelet. And I say, you can't buy the bracelet. You can't get a bracelet. And the first question he asks is, why can't I, as a Christian? Of course. That's a good question, isn't it? But what does the Bible say? Does the Bible preach against bracelets? Hmm? Part of the things that Jezebel wore, isn't it? Put on bracelets, put on makeup. The first mention of makeup in the Bible was when Jezebel heard that Jehu was coming to kill her and to kill her husband. And so she decided to wear makeup, wear bracelets. Isn't it? Jacob, when the point of repentance came, collected bracelets and jewelry and everything from all members of his household and burnt them in preparation for them to meet with God. So there is something about the Bible, as Bible students, you must never forget. And that is the principle or the law of first mention. When something is first mentioned in the Bible, use that first mention to understand other verses of the Bible that talks about it. The first time makeup was mentioned in the Bible was to deceive, was to create an impression to make Jehu miss out on his purpose of God. So that's the law of first mention. The first time it was mentioned. The same thing for birthdays. The first time birthday was mentioned in the Bible, somebody died. Pharaoh's, uh, Pharaoh's uh, uh, baker died. Isn't it? The second time birthday was mentioned was when? Job. When Job children went to celebrate birthdays. Isn't it? How many people died? All his children died. The third time birthday was mentioned in the Bible was when? No. The third time was John the Baptist. Herod. What happened? John the Baptist had to lose his head because of birthday. So, we should always ask, what does the scripture say? What does the Bible say? Don't wear skirt. Don't wear trousers. Why can't we? Instead of, what does the Bible say? Some of the bracelets and the things we are putting on today have been polluted. And Paul has warned us severally against contamination and pollution in the end times. Now, is it only bracelets, rings, jewelries that are polluted? No. Even wristwatches are polluted. Even clothes are polluted. But can you do without clothes today? Well, you can do without bracelets. You can do without rings. So why invest heavily on adding more bondage and stress to yourself? When we have been told to make our spirit as light as possible, so that when the trumpet sounds, we can easily go with our master. So we must be careful of the spirit of the age. Our time is far gone. And the spirit of the age today manifests itself in the following ways. Lawlessness. Lawlessness has increased across the length and breadth of the land and across the world. Protests, disobedience, 
immorality and sex. We have talked about that. Sex has become the common language in the world today. Everything talks about sex. When you turn the television, it's sex. When you open your phone, it's sex. Sex has become the common currency. Why? Because sex is one of the greatest weapons of the spirit of the age that we live in. We live in a sex-denominated world. When you go on social media today, the first thing you see is sex. And the last thing you're going to see is sex. People are sent away from offices because of sex. People are appointed into offices because of sex. Sexual-related harassments are everywhere. Everything is now built on sex. People get promoted based on sex. People get positions based on sex. That's the spirit of the age. And the church today is battling sex. Battling sex in the church. The spirit of the age is also made manifest in what? Social media. People spend more time on social media these days more than they spend time on reading the Bible. Is it a sin to go on social media? No. It is wrong when you spend two hours on social media and you spend 40 minutes on the Bible. So if you want to spend two hours on social media, get ready to spend two hours on the Bible first before you go to the social media. Pay your tithe of time to God and then also to the God of the social media. There is nothing wrong if you go on social media. You can evangelize on the social media. But read the word of God. Pray. Then when you go to social media, you tell God, Holy Spirit, I'm going to show me that because I've spent two, three hours today with you. I've paid my tithe of time with you. So I want to go and relax and enjoy social media. There's nothing wrong with that. God looks at what? Our intent. This, my child, is on social media for the past three hours. But he has not read his Bible today. He has not prayed today. He has not engaged the spirit today. That's the spirit of the age that we're talking about. So, phone usage. Phone usage. The spirit of the age has gone into how Christians use phone, even in the church. For example, this church, for the past two years, we have said that no usage of phone in this church for Bible or for him and no charging of phones in the church. Why? Because the usage of phone has brought in contamination and pollution into the presence of God. We do not know what you carry in your phones. We do not know the WhatsApp groups and the Facebook groups you belong to that may unknowingly send some pornographic content into your phone and you bring that same spirit with the spirit of pornography that follows your phone into the house of God and it is on or it is being charged. We don't want that. The spirit of phone usage that tells you that you must look for anywhere to charge your phone once the battery is going down is the spirit of the age. What you should be concerned about is, is my spiritual battery charged? We have Christians looking for where to charge their phones more than where to charge their spiritual batteries. You are not permitted to charge your phone if your spiritual battery is not charged. How do you know when your spiritual battery is low? We always know when our phone is low, but we don't know when our spiritual battery is low. God looks at us. We enter church, we go into offices, the first thing we do is to look for where to charge our phone. And God wonders, how can my child be conscious of, more conscious of his spiritual battery than this phone that he's carrying? You have Christians with very low spiritual batteries, not making any effort to charge their batteries to the topmost level, but they are concerned about charging the battery of their phone, which will not follow them to eternity. Are you going to heaven with phone? How do you charge your spiritual battery? Pray, speak in tongues, read the word of God, engage the spirit of God. Pray for the purposes of God to come on earth. Pray that the salvation power of God flows around the earth. Pray for your country, pray for the land of Israel. You charge your spiritual battery by doing so. But we are concerned about our phone battery. Of course, in the church of God, in the offices, you can charge your touch lights. Because that goes in consonance with the word of God, which says, let light be. So anything that brings light, you can charge it. Charge your, 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 your touch lights. Let there always be light in your life. The spirit of the age. And um, loans and recovery. Very, very important. I need to say this. Because just recently, a wife of a pastor got loan from one of these online loan agencies. 
and they started insulting her. They sent me messages saying that she's a crook, she's this, she's that. She took loan of hundred and something for us. She has refused to pay. If you know her, she's a criminal. She's this. How many of us have received such texts? A child of God has no business taking loan because loan these days is what the manifestation of the spirit of the age. The devil manipulates you to take a loan, knowing fully well that no debtor will enter the kingdom of heaven. If within the period of the loan that you have taken, anything happens to you and you leave this earth, you can never go to heaven. Because the devil will come to God and say, you are a righteous God. Why would you admit a debtor to your kingdom? And so people go around taking loans from some of these rent money agencies. And then they copy all the contacts on your, on your phone to spoil your character. The, the pastor's wife got in touch with me and said, this is what is happening. She's considering a legal action against them now. She's going to court. Why? When the Bible tells us not to take one another to court, isn't it? But she has to go to court now. Why? Because she has taken the first step of taking a loan. After taking the loan, she paid the loan. The people now said the delay in the period of the loan, she didn't pay when she was supposed to pay. So because of that delay, she used to pay 100 and something thousand. And she said that was not in the agreement. And then they started spoiling her name to all the contacts. And that has been happening. You should stay contented with what God has given you. Don't go and take loans from the devil. Islamic banking is here in Nigeria and many Christians are rushing to take loan because there is no interest in Islamic bank. Do not go there. You are taking money from the children of Ishmael and they will come at you. And if before you pay, anything happens to your life. If before you pay, rapture happens. I am sorry for you. So we must be very careful of the spirit of loans and recovery. The spirit of terrorism, we all know that, has gone into the world. Revelations uh, uh, 9 and 16 tells us about the, the rider on the green horse, which has gone into the world that will kill more than half of the world. A quarter of the world will be taken by this power of Islam, which, is, which brings death and hell. Um, the spirit of the age has also gone into homosexual, has gone into the church with homosexuality. We have homosexual priests, homosexual bishops, homosexual pastors, and we even have pastors joining a lady to a lady in wedlock. The spirit of idolatry and cultism, cultism has gone haywire. Today, we have churches who encourage cultism. On campuses, we have fellowships that are connected to a particular cult or the other. That is the spirit of the age. And then, of course, we have scams, all kinds of financial and love scams. Nigerians are experts in scamming white women into love and to take their money. We are good in 419. We are good in Yahoo Yahoo. All these are what? 50 years ago was then Yahoo Yahoo. That is the spirit of the age that we are up against. And our children are also going to face this. Already some children are growing up saying that they want to be Yahoo Yahoo. That is their ambition. So that is the spirit of the age in play, at play. Then we have also the spirit of the age as evident in children of God painting their hair, changing the color of their hair. God made your hair black. God created your hair white. God had a reason for making your hair black. But you come up and you say, well, God did not think very well. I'm supposed to, my hair is supposed to be like chameleon. Every dress I wear must reflect the color of my hair. And so today you are wearing pink. Then you have a touch of pink on your hair. You are wearing gold. Your hair must be gold. You are not a chameleon. God did not create you as a chameleon. When you change the color of your hair, you are sneering at God. You are telling God that you, did, you are not forthright. You did not think of the future. Why did you create me with just one color of hair? Why did you create me with just one color of my fingernails? I want my fingernails to rhyme with the color of my shoes. You are sneering at God. And brothers too are changing the color of their hair these days. It is wrong. God had a reason for giving you a black hair. Abide by it, stay with it, and he will bless you for your obedience. The spirit of the age is evident even in cryptocurrencies that is going everywhere, pollution on the altar, uh, the spirit of error, and the spirit of the age is 
evident in the way people come to church these days. People find it easy to come late to church. People walk leisurely to church. That's the spirit of the age. Why would you come late to church and you don't go late to your exam halls? Why do you come late to church and you don't go late to your interview, job interviews? Why do you come late to God and you don't go late if the president or the governor of the state invites you for an appointment? That's the spirit of the age. And we must work against, we must rise up against it. How do we activate freedom from the spirit of the age? The theme for this month is what? Real freedom in Christ Jesus. Is there real freedom for us from the spirit of the age? Yes, there is real freedom. In John chapter 17, verse 15, we're told that do not take Jesus in praying. Say, do not take them out of the world. But I want you to do what? Keep them in the world and protect them. Jesus, at the end of his ministry, prayed to his father that these are the ones that you have given to me. I'm committing them into your hands. I am not praying that you should take them out of the world, but keep them in the world and protect them. There is protection. There is, there is, there is, there is protection in the word of God from the powers of the age. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, we are told to do what? Present ourselves as living sacrifice. Give your bodies. Give your bodies wholly to Christ. That's how my version puts it. Give your bodies. What are the parts of your bodies? Your hair, your fingernails, your eyes, your, 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 your lips, everything that, is, that forms part of you. Give it wholly to God as a living sacrifice. You know, the challenge of Christians today is being a living sacrifice because living sacrifice can crawl from the altar. Dead sacrifices have nowhere to go to. They are dead, they remain dead. But Christ has called us to be a living sacrifice that must stay on the altar. So we must live as living sacrifice, give our bodies to Christ holy, and be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We must never compromise. We must never compromise in this age of the manif manifestations of the spirit of the age. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8, we are told that now that our heart is in light, we must show that light. You must begin to reflect the light that is in your heart. If you are a child of God, God ushers his light into your life. And that light is not to remain there because when it remains there, it goes dim. It's for you to take that light out and to spread it across the world. Let your light shine. Let the light shine so that darkness, so that it can dissipate darkness in the world. By doing so, you will be walking against the spirit of the age. The spirit of the age will not have influence and power over you. We must follow God's leading in everything that we do. Galatians chapter 5 verse 25. Follow God's leading. Ask, what is the will of God in this? I want to go to this place now. God, what are you saying? The Holy Spirit of God, should I go to my too? Everything that you do. The clothes that you wear. Ask the Holy Spirit each day. Should I wear this clothes? You say the grace. You say communion of the Holy Spirit. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide by me. Uh, you crave the fellowship. And he comes and you don't engage him. We need to engage the Holy Spirit. Let him get into our everyday life. By so doing, you'll be able to withstand the spirit of the age. Follow God's example of love. Love one another as I have loved you. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, Paul tells the Christians that what? They should do what? Trust Christ daily. Trust him every day of your life. No matter what is happening, have complete trust in God. Then in John chapter 8, verse 30. 1 to 36, where our theme is taken from, we learned that the knowledge of the truth is what sets free. The knowledge of the truth of Christ Jesus sets you free. Isn't it? It makes you free. It puts you in a place of freedom. So what, are the, what is the knowledge of the truth that you know? What is the knowledge of the truth that you know? The truth that we know today is exemplified and personified in our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you have the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? Do you know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior? Let us rise up. We must resist the spirit of the age by trusting, obeying, and worshipping the one and true God of this and every age who has called us to know him. There is the spirit of this age and there is a spirit of the God who controls all ages. The God of yesterday, today, and forever. And that God has called us to do what? To know him and to walk in his truth every day. He has called us to the knowledge of the truth of himself. Have you come to that point in your life? 
Have you come to the point that you, are, you say, Jesus Christ, I accept you today into my life? If you have not taken that step, today is another opportunity for you to do so. Because the window of opportunity is open until the very last day. And the host of heavens are available right now, waiting for you to take that move and to say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I come to the knowledge of the truth so that I can be set free from the powers and the machinations of the spirit of the age. When all eyes are closed, let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. In any way that you find yourself guilty or operating in the spirit of this age, the spirit of this age, the manifestations, the manipulations, begin to confess. Anyone who wants to give his life to Christ while all eyes are closed, anyone like that, anyone here, I want to give my life to Christ, I have never done so, or I want to rededicate my life to Christ. I want to be free from the spirit of the age that is available in the world. Anyone like that? Close your eyes and talk to your father. Close your eyes and pray. Close your eyes and pray. Father, we thank you for the knowledge of the truth that is available in you. We thank you for opening our eyes to the manipulations and the machinations of the spirit of the age. And we pray, oh Lord, that you grant us the grace, the capacity to withstand, to walk away from every appearance of the spirit of the age. Grant us the strength and the capacity and the knowledge to walk away from every manipulation of the spirit of the age in the name of Jesus. Pray. Pray, pray, pray. Talk to your father.